thanks for joining us. This is Nationwide. I'm Ruth Aguale. We'll begin from Washington, D.C., where we hear journalists are making a significant contribution to bringing to the fore topical global issues at the International Monetary Fund Spring Meeting at Washington, D.C. Leah Katung Mabatunde reports. The World Bank and the International Monetary Fund jointly host a spring meeting in April and annual meetings in October. Every five years, the annual meetings leave Washington, D.C. for a member nation, while some meetings are open to the press. Orders are not, so both institutions offer press centers, interview rooms, and floor spaces to the press. Nigerian journalists are eager to learn. They want to interact with their foreign colleagues. They want to compare notes. You want to know what is happening in other countries. It's something that um, every journalist should uh, aspire to, to attend, to attain to this, um, to get to this level. It affords us the opportunity to, to, to interact with our ministers and our governors. We are able to get insights on what is really happening in Nigeria. A typical look at the room reveals a large number of Nigerian print and electronic media translating to Nigeria having the highest foreign delegation to the meetings. This is more like an advice to the IMF and the World Bank. When we come for these meetings and um, we get to ask questions during press briefings, they should stop seeing Africa as a, as a single country. When there's time for question and answer and you, you raise the issue of Nigeria, they'll tell, always tell you to wait till we get to the Africa briefing. No, whereas in the same press, uh, press briefing, when issues of Russia, China, um, um, and other, Africa, other countries are raised, you try to answer them. But when it gets to countries in Africa, you say, wait till we get to Africa briefing. This is not proper. Both presenters have desk officials from both institutions who offer support and ensure information is adequately passed. As the meetings end, it goes quiet in here. And this time around, for one year, as Morocco, host the annual meetings in October 2023. The hustle and bustle return spring 2024. From Washington, D.C., Leah Katung Baba Chunde, NTA News. To all the issues, the National Defense College is upscaling measures to further secure ungoverned forests in the country. This is the focus of the 12th National Security Seminar 2023 by the alumni of the Apex Military Training Institution and the Office of the National Security Advisor. So the question now is, when these people move into the forest, how do we track them? How do we find out their locations? How, particularly when you know that they have kidnapped people from a particular location, therefore you know where they started from and are moving into the forest and so on. So with the deployment of technology, you should be able to track. There are preventive measures. The program is advocating the application of technology as a force multiplier in enhancing peace and security in the country. The headquarters of the Independent National Electoral Commission has directed the resident electoral commissioner in Adamawa State, Hudu Yunusa Ari, to stay away from duty from the commission's office in Adamawa State immediately until further notice. A statement by the Secretary R.O. Einek, Rose Anthony, notes that the administrative security Secretary has been directed to take full charge of INEC with immediate effect. An illegal coal miner in Okaba and Pat local government area of Kogi State has been arrested by the Special Surveillance Task Force of the Federal Ministry of Mines and Steel Development, Ajibola Christopher, reports that the team is working in collaboration with the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps. The high-deposit coal in Okaba and Paluko government area of Kogi State has attracted companies to register with the Federal Ministry of Mines and State Development with a view to harness the raw materials for industrial purposes. Based on a report 
of illegal miners and the activities in the area, a special mine surveillance task force on illegal mining with support from the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps swung into action to curtail their act. One person was arrested while others fled. A generator, wheelbarrow and other tools used in the illegal mining were recovered. The mineral belong to federal government, and if they want to tap it, they have to go through due process, just by you know a way of getting their license, mining license, which they have refused to do. We are losing a lot of revenue, and we don't want that again. And honestly speaking, we are here to stop that. Minister of Mines and State Development, Olalekon Adegbite, represented by the federal mines officer in Kogi State, hinted that the federal government has lost a lot of resources to illegal miners suggested the host communities be sensitized on the effect of illegal mining to the Nigerian economy. I have warned them several times not to take less into their hand. If they have any complaint, they should put it in writing to federal government, but they will not listen. And meanwhile, the company, we have checkmated them, we make sure they are doing the, their best for the community. Even the community development agreement they have signed, I was there, I witnessed it, so I wouldn't know their problem. They felt the mineral is in their land, and they felt they could lay their hands on, me, on the mineral at any time they like. Kogi State has huge mineral deposits, for investors to harness. Ajibola Christopher, NT News. From the aviation scene, the Nigerian Aviation Workers Unions are on a two day nationwide strike. One in strike, actually, over non implementation of the revised conditions of service negotiated some years back. Our correspondent, Ali Utuku, was at the Inamdi Azikiwe International Airport, Abuja, and gives us an update now. Long queues of vehicles trying to assess the Namdia Zikwe International Airport. This is as a result of two days' warning strike by the aviation workers. On getting to the airport, aviation workers from different agencies, bind by the same purpose, chant solidarity songs. Their grievances include failure to implement the minimum wage consequential adjustment and the planned demolition of their Lagos offices. People go to the same markets, but since 2009, this, this issue has been approved by the federal government for all workers in Nigeria. But you will be surprised that the aviation industry is not enjoying this minimum wage and consequential adjustment. Although flight operations are ongoing, thanks to the management staff, who have stepped in to fill the vacuum created by the strike. Uh, been in airport. Okay, so how was it over there? It was normal. There was no sign of strike, nobody, no, nothing. The union advised passengers to find alternative means of traveling as the day two of the strike will be a total shutdown of operations. Ali Utukur, NTA News. All right, let's also get updates from Lagos talking about the aviation story. And Hingino John Adams is already standing by to pick up with some more reports. Hingino. Hingino. Thank you, Ruth. Hingino. Um, Thank you, Ruth. Five unions in the country, oh. as you heard earlier, in the aviation industry have started a 48-hour warning strike to draw attention of government and other relevant stakeholders to what they described as unacceptable condition of service. Lan Regbele was at the local wing of the Murtala Mohammed International Airport to witness the industrial action. The five unions embarking on the industrial action are the National Union of Air Transport Workers, NUHATI, Association of Airline Pilots and Engineers, NAPI, Air Transport Service Senior Staff Association of Nigeria, ATSAN, Amagamented Union for Public Cooperation, Technical and Recreation Employee, and Association of Nigerian Aviation Professionals, ANAP. <laughs> They are demanding for resolution on three main issues, release of approved condition of service for agencies in the aviation sector, normally implementation of minimum wage consequential adjustment and planned demolition of the aviation quarters and offices for metropolitan projects. The union say the warning strike became necessary after avenues of communication have met with silence. We know that this is not a pleasant site. We know 
but we have been enjoying these inequities on our own for years. This is the time to just give a dose of it. We know that some people will sympathize with us, some will not. But the point remains that they will say it outside, that things are not well with aviation workers. So if, before the close of work tomorrow, they didn't implement all these things, the NIMEX uh, consequential ad uh, adjustment uh, uh, areas is not paid, then we will continue on indef 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 indefinite suspension next week. They hope the measure will expedite action on issues put forward to the authorities. In Lagos, Larry Bilayi, NT News. From Aviation Matters now, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has been urged to enhance its electoral performance in the future, particularly with regard to distribution of materials on election day for effective and efficient service delivery. One of Nigeria and Africa's leading scholars in electoral administration and politics, Professor Adele Ginadu, gave the advice during a special postmortem on the 2023 elections in Nigeria held at the Nigerian Institute of International Affairs, NIIA, Lagos. Our use of Jubo completes the report. It was a gathering of intellectuals to brainstorm on the outcome of the 2023 elections with a view to improving future elections in Nigeria. Professor Adele Jinodu, a scholar in electoral matters, agreed that there was high expectation for the 2023 elections, particularly as other African countries look up to Nigeria for conduct of credible elections. He stated that INEC needs to be able to provide efficient logistics during elections and offer adequate security for everyone involved. What is worrisome about these glitches, particularly those relating to operational deployment of officials and so on, is that they have remained recurrent problematic features, diminishing the credibility of our electoral governors from one electoral cycle to the other since the mid-1950s. Other speakers frowned at INEC's inability to deliver on its pre-election promises to Nigerians, including the use of beavers machines for a credible process. Why do we have the um, kinds of tendencies you know, that we saw again in the elections? Why are elections you know, like warfare you know, to us and so on? Why, why do we get so divisive when we are confronted you know, uh, with elections? The consensus was that INEC must be proactive and intentional in its planning for future elections so as to avoid the mistakes of the 2023 elections. In Lagos, Awal Yusuf Jubo, NTA News. Don't forget to follow this news broadcast live on our website at nta.ng slash live and on our other social media handles displayed on your screen for updates nationwide. We'll be back after this break with Felicia in Joss. All I need to say about the, uh, about the Second River Niger Bridge, um, 20, 21 years ago, as I came onto this throne, um, it will normally take you three to four hours to cross the bridge. I mean, if you are going to Lagos, you spent almost half your time on the bridge. And you were stuck on the bridge before you came across from Asaba this morning. Now, could you imagine how the people of Onicha and Asaba have endured such a situation for over 25, 30 years? This is reality. Um, so uh, we cannot overestimate the importance of uh, the Second River Niger Bridge uh, to express uh, appreciation to our president, uh, Muhammad Buhari, um, for being the vehicle for the execution of this uh, monumental project. I'm fascinated with the discourse on national monuments and assets and how much is being done to preserve and Look into the language issue. Thing. We have turned English to become like a pride value in our own cultural values. It's not cash transfer. Is not a COVID-19. Invasion 1897 was a deliberate 
You know, many of these people come into the urban areas now. These and applications, um, there are terms and conditions. That of course, um, it is the union of uh, two people, a man and a woman coming together. My name is Nam Biondiko. And I'm Elizabeth Omori. of TV Guide is an expository of the Comrade DG. From the trenches to the throne, Comrade Salihu Abdul Hamid Dembos, the Director General, Nigerian Television Authority. We also beamed on notable media personalities who have impacted the media space in no small measure. This edition is a compendium of mind-blowing stories for your reading pleasure, ranging from culture and tourism, entertainment, economy, sports, health, marketing issues, parenting, media, politics, and lots more. Pick up a copy and keep abreast of issues and trending features within our space. TV Guide, very incisive, very educative, and compelling. Grab a copy at the vendor near you or any NTA station nationwide. TV Guide, your indispensable companion. You're still on to Nationwide on the network service of the NTA. Welcome to JOS. Secretary to the Government of Plateau State, Professor Nladiatu, has inaugurated the Publicity and Security Committees for the 2023 Population and Housing <laughs> Census with a charge to work towards a successful exercise. Rinret Silvanus Lot has details. Having been inaugurated, the major task of the publicity and security committees is to create adequate awareness as well as provide an enabling environment for smooth conduct of the 2023 census. This is in view of the importance of a reliable data for national planning and development. The Secretary to the Government of the State advised that the people and other key players be carried along in an effort to generate reliable data. I have a very wondrous thing uh, this assignment to ensure that the message gets to the people at the right time and in good time. And the message cannot get there already in the citizens are not secure. The Federal Commission and National Population Commission, Plateau State, solicits the cooperation of all, noting that data is required for national planning. Each time we went out for a walk, we, we had some security protection. It's not possible that we alone can reach all the nooks and corners of, of our plateau with this message. NTA just, we ensure that a credible and comprehensive report is done so that the 2023 population and housing census will be exorcised. The committee is promised to work assiduously towards the realization of national goals. In just Rinred Silvanus Lot, NTA News. Away from population matters to health. With statistics from the World Health Organization indicating that tuberculosis is the 13th leading cause of death and the second leading infectious killer disease after COVID-19 in Nigeria, Plateau State is taking concrete steps to curb the spread of the infection. The reports. Tuberculosis is an airborne disease, a contagious infection that affects the lungs and can also spread to other parts of the body like the brain and spine. The infection is caused by a bacteria called Mycobacterium tuberculosis, which is commonly transmitted when an infected person coughs or sneezes. Medical experts say a lot of people have the infection but are unaware due to lack of tests. As in every 100,000 people, 219 are infected. You can be infected but sometimes it doesn't go on to become uh, the disease. The disease is when you start having signs and symptoms like coughing.
fever, night sweat, and weight loss. To curb this infection and also reduce its risk factors, Plateau State Tuberculosis and Leprosy Control Program is exploring all measures as well as partnering with non-governmental organizations to find a way out. The Ministry of Health in Plateau State estimated uh, about 10,000 TB cases. However, we have only been able to achieve about 3,600 uh, TB cases as of last year. They also identified local governments where cases are already prevalent to include just north and south, Mangu as well as Shandam. The experts emphasized that TB testing, counseling and medication are all free. Okay, and that it is from Joss. Let's rejoin Ruth in Abuja for the continuation of Nationwide. Yeah. Nigeria has approved the R21 malaria vaccine for use in children from 5 to 36 months. Consequently, Nigeria is now the second country in the world to take the step forward in fighting the life-threatening disease. Director General, National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAFDAQ, Professor Mujisola Adeyeye, disclosed this in Abuja. Let's hear details from Hamman Japani. In the latest World Malaria Report, there were 247 million cases of malaria in 2021 compared to 247 million cases in 2020. The estimated number of malaria deaths stood at 619,000 in 2021 compared to 621,000 in 2020. Four African countries account for more than half of the malaria deaths worldwide. Nigeria is the highest with 31%, followed by the Democratic Republic of Congo, Tanzania, and Niger Republic, making Nigeria to have 55% prevalence rate. R21 malaria vaccine, the first to exceed WHO threshold of a 75% efficacy after 12 months of follow-up and showed a 77% protective efficacy over 12 months in a phase 2B trial involving young West African children following an initial three-dose course of injection. It is believed it will address the death of over 600,000 each year, most of which are children as a result of malaria. It's granting registration approval for R21 malaria vaccine recombinant adjuvanted that was manufactured by Serum Institute of India. The R21 malaria vaccine is an adjuvanted protein vaccine presented as a sterile solution. The vaccine is indicated for prevention of clinical malaria in children from five months to 36 months. The dossier was reviewed at two different levels independently using standards of WHO across relevant domains, in addition to ICH guidelines and European Medicines Agency guidelines. The manufacturer is donating a large number of the vaccine to Nigeria and it is expected to be received soon. Hamman Jabani, NTA News. The conduct of the April 15th supplementary elections in some parts of the country leaves much to desire. However, putting in place the right mechanism to curb vote buying and violence witnessed in some areas is what guests on NTA's Good Morning Nigeria say the country must work on for better electioneering process in future. Alika Kwanachi Arua reports. To these guests, supplementary elections are supposed to be corrective elections without gaps and glitches. But the fact that politicians cannot grow fast enough to play the game according to the rules is rather disappointing. Largely, uh, the results that came out of this was a, a ref, uh, was a true reflection, so to speak, of uh, the will of the people and their votes are really counted in, 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 in most of the elections. So INEC should have a very good collaboration, should do a, a, to, to do a more robust work to ensure that uh, these problems are not coming up at the time of our uh, election. But uh, we thank God, as I said, that uh, the election was successfully uh, concluded on that very day without any uh, problem. The guests feel the electoral body will do better if it sorts out issues of transportation for safe and timely deployment of electoral materials and security personnel to polling units for early commencement of elections. If the politicians do not 
begin to think very seriously about this democracy and just see that see party politics and elections as a vote catching process then we will not deepen this process we will not deepen democracy we will not consolidate it what you need to deploy to the states are not partisans are not people who see an egg job as kind of harvest time but put in place directors of election as recommended by justice ways persons who, whose careers will be at stake if they misbehave punity measures against electoral offenders were also canvassed in abuja alika okonachi aroa nt news Mom politics, one of the governorship aspirants for Kogi State Senator Smart Adeyemi and three others have protested against the announcement of Ahmed Usman Ododo as the governorship candidate for the All Progressives Congress. At a joint press briefing in Abuja, the aspirants explained that the declaration of Ododo as winner is a deviation from the party's constitution and should be critically reviewed. The aspirants include Shaibu Abubakar Audu, the former Minister of State for Labour, Professor Stephen Ocheni, and Yakubu Mutala Ajaka. We are not going to allow it to hold, to, to stand, and I want to believe that the APC, be the most democratic party, will not allow it to stand. I say most democratic because it was, if you look at the record, so far, APC is the only party today that lost election in key areas in the last election, in the last presidential election. And yet, we didn't talk. Yet, we allowed to go. So I'm calling on the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Muhammad Buhari, and our President-elect, Bola Ahmed Tinibu, the National Chairman of our great party, and all the authorities responsible for the administration of justice, Equity and fair play to ensure that the purported result does not stand. In the related development, the Coalition of Independent Election Observers on Kogi Governorship Primary Election has commended the peaceful exercise that produced Ahmed Usman Ududu as the party's governorship candidate. Sally Huguanara reports that the observer group commended the commitment of the APC stakeholders, particularly party members across Kogi State, for adopting the direct mode of primary that ensured smooth conduct of the exercise. Have as a reference point in the conduct of primaries in the country. The direct mode of primaries embraced ensured that all the aspirants, aspir aspirations were tested and endorsed by their immediate constituents. It is safe to say that the process that produced Al Haji Ahmed Usman Otodo was transparent, credible was transparent and credible. The Coalition of Independent Elections Observers highly recommends the Kogi State example in, condu in produ conducting gubernatorial primaries nationwide. Open the case of forgery of Supreme Court judgment against the factional national chairman of the All Progressive Grand Alliance, Edozie Njoku, at the FCT High Court, Buari, Abuja. Austin Ayembe, who witnessed the proceeding, reports. The police have rendered Edozie Njoku and Chukwe Mekangwoku on a 14 count charge bordering on falsification of a judgment delivered by the Supreme Court on 14 October 2021. The defendants were accused of procuring the services of some officials of the Apex Court who inserted the name of a dozen in Joko when he was never a part in the case. The police prosecution at the hearing presented a false prosecution witness, Deputy National Secretary of APGA, who testified that the defendant in Joko never participated in the APGA convention held in Oka in 2019. That the judgment he was parading is a forged document. And it is in the, the public purview. As at last time there was a was the matter came up, the same judgment came up in the Supreme Court, in which the amendment he effected by himself by the wayside. He brought it before the Supreme Court justice to rectify via motion. Supreme Court granted the motion. 
but did not see maintain that they did not change the judgment. We went to Supreme Court last year, in the month of May, June last year, connived with the staff of Supreme Court and altered the Supreme Court judgment with his name as a party. And he's using those judgments of the Supreme Court to parade himself as a national chairman of Afghanistan. expected them to bring evidence from the Supreme Court, from the Nigerian police, but especially from the Supreme Court. And right here, that means secretary of the Supreme Court is right here. There was however a twist after the case was adjoined to 27 April 2023, when a police prosecutor alleged that before the commencement of proceeding, the defendant, Edoze, allegedly threatened to kill him. Edoze from the court premises was invited to the Buari police station for questioning on the allegation in Abuja. Austin and Yebe, NT News. Despite the economic importance of local government to the development of rural areas and local communities through the provision of basic infrastructure and independence in managing local public affairs, some state houses of assembly in Nigeria have rejected a proposed financial aid legislative autonomy for local government. Now, this development is attracting reactions um, of some Nigerians who feel local government autonomy should be strongly encouraged for more deepened democracy. Let's hear from Maureen Leo Ajong. Local government autonomy as a grassroots democracy is primarily aimed at giving the vast majority of the people in the rural area opportunity to participate in determining their own destiny, among other benefits to the citizenry at the grassroots. The National Assembly, perhaps upon recognizing the importance of local government autonomy to deepen democracy, included the local government autonomy bill among the 44 constitutional amendment bills, which only 35 scaled through and have already been passed by state assemblies. However, the local government autonomy is among bills yet to meet the requirement of the provision of the Section 9, Subsection 2 of the Constitution. This is perhaps as a result of rejection of the autonomy by nine state houses of assembly in the country. We are actually having developments only in the town and um, you know urban areas. But if this money goes down to the local government, apart from it and enhancing the economy of the local populace, it will go a long way to making those at the roots grassroots administration is the most important because that is where you find about 70 percent of our populace residing in the villages and if you affect the lives of 70 percent of personages at the, at the, in the various villages, things will change in this country. Although Cross River State House of Assembly is not among the nine state houses of assembly, yet to forward their resolutions to the National Assembly, the rejection by other states has naturally delayed the process of actualizing local government autonomy in Nigeria. Consequently, the local government autonomy bill is not included among the 35 bills forwarded for assent by the President. In Calabar, Maureen Liu, Ajom, NTN News. The launch of the Beijing TV dramas and movies broadcasting season in Nigeria will foster intercultural promotion between Nigeria and China. Chief Executive Officer of Star Times, Joshua Wang, said this at the 2023 series of the broadcasting season in Africa. Adabla Brooksland Sunday reports. Described as two largest developing countries and important emerging markets in the northern and eastern hemisphere, China and Nigeria have continued to strengthen their bilateral ties, especially through the entertainment industry. This gathering is to showcase 12 popular Beijing TV dramas and movies that Nigerian audiences can watch on the StarTime platform and on NTA Entertainment Channel. Chief Executive Officer of Star Times, Joshua Wang, told the forum that the TV dramas and movies cover a wide variety of genre to meet demands of audience of different age groups. So we have Chinese film and um, television dramas has been Broadcasting in Africa, especially for Hausa and the Swahili, which is dubbed by Star Time. So we know audience, audience and uh, videos work is an important window 
for the <coughs> mutual understanding between Chinese and the African countries. We always say that if you want to go faster, you go alone. If you want to go far, you go together. So I'm convinced that if China and Nigeria, we work together, we share together, we really can achieve together, we really can go far. Represented by the acting director of marketing, Awanimia, Director General, Nigerian Television Authority, Salu Abdulhamid Dembo said, the NTA Star Times joint venture is contributing more to the efforts of strengthening the mutual exchange between the two nations. Chinese folklore and uh, movies have for decades been a huge source of entertainment in the country. Nigeria's movie industry, popularly called Nollywood, is reputed to be the second largest movie industry in the world, churning um, out hundreds of, mu of movies every month. This is one area where great opportunities for artistic and cultural collaboration between Nigeria and China abound. In addition to the TV drama, Star Times is set to showcase a dating show in Nigeria. Just as the name implies, it's we're looking for Mr. Wright. Hello, Mr. Wright. So it's actually a dating show. We are creating an opportunity for people to find love. It's pretty straightforward. There are always types of conditions. There are rules that, are, um, that follow them, and we intend to follow it to the letter. The event, which is the eighth in the series, launched in 12 African countries, has featured 132 Chinese films and television dramas have been showcased in seven African languages. Adebola, Brooklyn Sunday, NTA News. The Director General, National Council for Arts and Culture, Olusha Gunvunshewe, says there is the need for strategic rethinking on cultural related narratives by filmmakers in Nigeria in order to avoid public resentment and reactions. Speaking on the controversy surrounding the newly released movie, Gang of Lagos, the Director General appealed to the Lagos State Government to forgive the infractions contained in a flick contained in the movie projecting the Ayo masquerade negatively. The Gang of Lagos had depicted the iconic Ayo masquerade as an enabler of violence, drawing angry reactions from several quarters, which described it as a misrepresentation of cultural ethos of the Ayo masquerade that is insulting to the tradition and history of Lagosians. Rune Shewe noted that the Ayo masquerade is one of the key cultural tourism products associated with with the history of Lagos and Nigerian culture. He advised filmmakers to be well guided when producing for public consumption themes on Nigerian cultural history so as not to provoke tension and irritations across the country. Okay, so let's join Salama too in our Kaduna Network Center. Glad to have you join us here in the spirit of Ramadan and in line with the Kanu State Zaka and Endowment Commission has disbursed 10 million naira to deserving vulnerable and less privileged citizens. Muhammad Ibrahim reports. Zakat is compulsory in Islam that requires wealthy individuals to give out to a recognized authority to distribute to the directly the money prescribed beneficiaries. Various speakers say Zakat purifies wealth. 10 million naira was distributed to more than 800 beneficiaries as categorized in the Holy Quran. Zakat that we have collected from the rich people, as every Muslim knows, it is now received from the wealthy, privileged people and distributed to the needy. The most important thing that one should, you know, always observe and abide with that you should pay the zakat, the poor do, whenever you are trying to do, whenever you have the ways to spread, to disburse to the needy and the poor. While commending the efforts of the commission, the Kano State Governor promised to give out 30 million naira for disbursement through the commission. We have been told and we have received, the zakat committee has received an amount of 10 million naira from Al Haj Amin and Kano State Government will provide 30 million naira 
the distribution to those who are in need. Some of the beneficiaries appreciated the gesture and promised to make use of what they received judiciously. Each of the more than 800 beneficiaries received the sum of 10,000 Naira. Muhammad Ibrahim, NTA News. General Officer Commanding 1 Division Nigerian Army Major General Olufemi Akinjobi has tasked officers and soldiers to keep the trajectory of maintaining internal security within one division area of responsibility as major priority of stabilizing Nigeria. He said this while briefing senior officers of the command at the division headquarters, Kaduna. It is a maiden interaction between the 48th GOC, Major General Olufemi Akinjobi, with commanders and heads of units under the one division area of responsibility. Division with a rich history. While acknowledging the strides of his predecessors, he said under his command, officers and soldiers under the one division must remain resolute in decimating remnants of bandits terrorizing the people. His success is also the success of all of us sitting here and indeed our troops in the field. I want to thank him. We can only afford to move forward. Major General Olufemi Akinjobi was, before his deployment, the first commander of Operation Well Punch, and he took over the command of one division, Nigerian Army, from Major General Taurit Labaja, who is now Chief of Operations, Army Headquarters. Slema Rigachkun, NTA News. Suleiman Regachukun's report completes our package from here. You're still watching Nationwide on the network service of the NTA. We'll now pause for another break. Please stay tuned. Reform is the umbrella association of the over 12 million Nigerian rice farmers. Through the administration of good and quality extension services, uh, the Nigerian rice farmer has imbibed good agronomic practices, as a result of which the average yield per hectare, which used to be one ton as, as at 2015, is today five metric tons. This has resulted to the increase of the national production from three million per annum to nine million tons per annum. As a result of this, today Nigeria is the largest producer of rice in Africa. Since the beginning of 2015, or the beginning of our program, Nigeria has officially not imported any rice into the country. All these successes could not have been achieved without the political will of Mr. President. From dusk to dawn. 24 hours a day. NTA International is with you. In your living room, office, and everywhere, anywhere. We provide a company you desire in terms of balanced and up-to-date news, programs, and the best of entertainment. Tune in to DSTV Channel 251, Go TV Channel 91, Freeview Channel 264, or live streaming via www.visiontv.co.uk. You can also see us on Facebook and YouTube for quality content on the go. NTA International, Africa's window. We brought you the ballot. Are you not tinted by association and not worried that your good manners may likely get corrupted? Stain, uh, no, I don't think so. Personality data profiling of citizens in the country. Now we bring you the mandate. Join us Mondays and Tuesdays at 10.05 p.m. and 10.30 p.m. on Wednesdays, Thursdays and Fridays. The mandate showing on the network service of the NTA.
Welcome back. Farmers in rural areas in Akwaibom State have received additional inputs to drive the food sufficiency policy of the federal government. This was at the distribution of inputs held at the Cross River Basin and Rural Development Authority in Abak, where the farmers acknowledged the gesture of Akwaibom State in this regard. Evelyn Badu Ekbo reports. Abakunsungatai and Abakunsungidem communities are among beneficiaries of improved variety of farm inputs for the planting season. The farmers express joy that farming in the state and country is gradually taking its pride of place as many, especially the young, are venturing into farming as a means of livelihood. To encourage vegetable cultivation, pepper seedlings were among inputs distributed just as the government promises to supply fertilizers to enhance crop growth and yield. So every planting season, first and second planting seasons, and at different times of the year, you support them with input and various things to see that uh, Akwaibo State is a food sufficient state. The farmers were also exposed to farming techniques to improve quality and quantity of farm produce. The government has actually realized the usefulness of the farmers. This is the first time that I'm going to sit and uh, to plant a uh, pepper. And the pepper is very costly. The input that he has given, farmers in Abag, we will utilize, we will plant it so that uh, Abag will be the food basket to acquire Bumstead. Evelyn Badu, Epo, NCA News. Building synergy for proper engagements in social volunteering works has been conversed for transforming societies. This was the submission of speakers at a capacity training workshop for social volunteers in Abuja. Steve Lonai Uwankolo reports. These critical players in the social volunteer work have been drawn here by the plight of youths and women who contend with challenges arising from conflicts and wars in the West African sub-region. Some lose their lives, many are displaced, and others lose their livelihoods. This explains why the Executive Director, Association of Community Volunteers International, ASIV, Lami Mohammed, is seeking volunteerism that will stimulate social development in the society. Of into volunteerism. Our society today, if you ask anybody to do anything, you will say, How much you pay me? Yes. We get together, we say, What? This vision, we are going to set up an institution, an organization that will cater to the need of our fellow citizens who are suffering from this atrocity. Other speakers, including the representative of the Chinese ambassador to Nigeria, wants Nigerians to move away from the stereotypes and advanced relationships that will engender socio-economic development. Policies is not to be driven for the elite. Policy must have direct impact on the living condition of the people. Our interest in China is China solved one of the most existential challenges that has faced mankind in all history, the challenge of poverty. For participants, this has been an eye-opener to the ripple effects of conflicts and the tax before volunteers. Most volunteers are motivated to make differences and they do it to the sake of keeping others. I believe volunteering and um, personal development is very important and also very key to the societal development. The sensitization efforts, according to ASIV, will strengthen the fight against social injustice and sustainable development in the country. In Abuja, Steve Lonai, Waukolo, NTA News. Stakeholders have called for full participation of people of Taraba State in the forthcoming National Population and Housing Census to enable government acquire credible data for national development. They made this known while commenting on the prospects of census as Nigeria prepares for the exercise next month. Modeling Matthew Bendo reports. Nigerian census exercise can be traced to 1866 when the first head count was conducted. It was followed by other censuses conducted in 1871, 1881, 1891, and 1901. They were all held by the colonial masters, and all the censuses were conducted in Lagos colony and environs. 
Subsequent censuses followed in the country after independence, and the last conducted was in 2006, which puts the Nigerian population at 140.43 million people, comprising of 71.3 million males and 69.0 million females. Census is conducted to plan for development with a view to provide basic amenities such as healthcare facilities, schools, road infrastructure, accessible and portable drinking water to the populace. Conscious of this, the federal government through National Population Commission is conducting national population and housing census this year. Towards a successful population census in Tarapa State, the National Population Census has held series of activities including stakeholder sensitization and setting up of enlightenment committee that visited traditional and religious leaders in preparation for a seamless 2023 population and housing census. When men of the national population census come our way, we should come out and give them all the necessary information they require. So to assist ourselves and assist our government to plan well, each and every one of us should cooperate with the government and then get themselves registered. People in Tarapa State have been advised to avail themselves during the headcount and cooperate with officials for smooth conduct of the exercise in the state. For government to know what to do for that particular community, we must know the people that are in that place, the life that they are living, how many are they. Some stakeholders underscored the importance of the exercise, hence the need for participation by all to enable government obtain actual population to plan for the nation. Stakeholders, they should mobilize their people and the National Population Commission too. They should also set up their campaign. We partner with the NPC, National Population Commission, in the Population and Housing Census where we mobilize for the recruitment of ad hoc staff. To the census officials, to be able to go to the nooks and crannies of the state to ensure that they reach out to people and get them counted. The 2023 National Population Census is coming up 17 years after the conduct of the similar exercise in 2006. In Jalingu, modeling Matthew Bello, NTA News. The Nigerian Christian Pilgrims Commission says it will commence the airlift of 2023 Easter pilgrimage exercise to Israel, Kingdom of Jordan and all the holy sites by the end of the month. Executive Secretary of the Commission, Reverend Yakubu Pam, made this known at the successful conclusion of the 2022 December main pilgrimage to Israel and the Kingdom of Jordan. And finally, let me say that the next pilgrimage is coming up on the 26th of uh, this month. We're targeting 26 for the Easter pilgrimage. The pilgrimage we just finished is that of uh, 2022 men pilgrimage. The one we're about to go on is Easter pilgrimage of 2023, which will start at the end of this month by the special grace of God, and already we have pilgrims on ground. Reverend Yakubu Pam also used the opportunity to commend the media and sponsors of pilgrimage for the great success recorded by the commission. The chairman Kogi State Chapter of the Nigerian Union of Journalists, Adeiza Momo Jimo, has advised politicians and their supporters in the state to seek redress using constitutional means rather than resorting to blackmail whenever they are grieved. He made the statement at a press conference in Lokoja. Solomon Ayedein reports. The press conference at the AUJ Press Center in Lokoja came out of some reports making the rounds in the media where politicians in an attempt to condemn the conduct of the just concluded APC governorship primary in Kogi State tend to undermine the integrity of journalists and their various media houses with a claim that election did not hold. This the AUJ chairman said is not true. I want to put it on record that our members, that is journalists, went to the feed on the election day and monitor the process across the state. Audio, videos, and pictorial evidence of the exercise were gotten from the feed by journalists 
while monitoring the process, and reports were sent to various media houses based on their observations on the feed. Aside reporting the election process across locations in the state, journalists, he also emphasized, converged at the coalition center at the state APC secretariat in Lokoja and stayed up till early hours of Saturday morning to cover the coalition and declaration of results. For any aggrieved politician to now assert that all these sacrifices done by journalists amounted to colluding to declare concorded results is not just far from the truth, but showing disrespect for journalists and their media organizations. For us at the Kogi NUJ, we stand by the reports of journalists as published in their media houses on the conduct of the election. The state NUJ chairman urged aspirants who lost out at the party primaries not to drag journalists into their party affairs. He, however, urged journalists in the state to continue to uphold the ethical standards of the profession. In Lokoja, Solomon Ayedehi, NTA News. All right, that's Nationwide. Thank you very much for your time. Do have a pleasant evening. I'm Ruth Aguile. Bye. Although social media as a channel of communication is inherently harmless, it becomes harmful and damaging when used without discretion and thoughtfulness. Bad social media users spread rumors and fake news without 